Good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time of day it is. Thank you for tuning in to Conversations with Dr. Don. This show is produced and broadcast from the Portland, Oregon, USA. Uh, for your first time viewers, Conversations with Dr. Don is an ongoing series of one hour standalone talk shows where I interview interesting people like most of you out there about who they are as unique, one of a kind individuals and about whatever it is we have decided to talk about. So my guest this evening or on the, or here to the right here is John Francis mm -hmm. and his wife, Kay Poe. And how are you feeling right now? Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Yeah, great. You're doing, mm -hmm. so am I. Yeah. In Oregon. Good, in mm -hmm. Oregon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's so good to have you on again. It's been a while since you were on, but you were on twice in the past, weren't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. and you're such world travelers, and you're <laughs> so interesting to talk about anything you talk about. That's why I wanted to have you on again. So as you know, the show goes in two major parts. The first uh, half of the show is to, to do with your bio or who you are personally, so that when people see the second half of the show, when you're talking about friendship force, then they'll see where you're coming from when you're saying things about friendship force. And what does that mean, friendship force? Well, friendship force is an organization we belong to. It's one of a number of travel organizations, but this one was based on the idea that uh, a way to promote international friendship was for people from uh, one area to go and live in the homes of people in another country and make friends like that. It was an idea proposed originally uh, mm. during the Carter administration. Jimmy Carter thought it was a great idea. Uh -huh. And uh, now, today, there's about 370 Friendship Force Clubs around the world. And like we belong to one in Salem, there's one in Portland. And uh, we'll go and visit, like stay at, uh, um, well, what Kay and I did recently, we went and visited the Tokyo well, Club. Let's stop now because you're talking about mm. the second half of the show. Oh, okay. We're going to talk about you personally. Right, okay. So let's start about the simple basics here. And if you remember, I asked you a trick question now and then to see if you're on your toes. <laughs> and if I ask you a question that you don't want to answer, don't answer or tell me, get lost or whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, who should I talk to first, you or Kay? Mm. John. Oh, okay. Me. Why not? <laughs> yeah. She yeah. she does better at interrupting and, well, does, and see, does better at it. See, too. I must admit, John has a vision problem. He can't see very well. Uh -huh. He's lost most of his vision. So I tell him what he should see. So, you know, he'll say, is that a woman over there? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be that kind of show tonight, yeah, guys. <laughs> and he, he tells me I'm beautiful every day. I say his vision is just fine. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him grinning from ear to ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's start off with who you are. And uh, if I were to ask your best friend, John, who is John Francis? What would your best friend say? John is what? Be that person. Well, that's a good question. Of course um, it is. Uh, John is an ex-video producer. I used to do uh, television work uh, at uh, university level, uh, un uh, Washington State University and University of Idaho, and I retired uh, and was lucky enough to meet Kay on a bicycle ride, and um, the two of us have sort of formed up. We got married and um, tr like to travel around the world and uh, see, you know, and try to do some good and uh, see different countries. Mm -hmm. What would your best friend say about you? John is what? He's ugly, pretty, handsome, a nice guy. He mm -hmm. reminds me of Jesus or mm -hmm. what? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been asked that question before. I and, know. Uh, That's why it's a surprise for you. I see. Well, um, John is, John is uh -huh. extremely curious and uh, mm -hmm. likes to experience uh, new places and new things. Okay. Let's continue on with you. And when and where were you born? Myself? Yeah. I was born in Western Canada, raised up in Calgary, uh, came to the U.S. Well, I went, went hitchhiking for about seven years all, all around Africa after I got out of university and then decided I was really interested in film rather than print journalism. I'd been a journalist uh, in Africa. And th so I uh, moved down to the States and took a degree at UCLA in filmmaking. And uh, since that time, I've lived in the U.S. with a, you know, a couple of trips to Africa in there. What possessed you to have that sort of interest in Africa? 
Um, it's a fascinating place, actually. It was kind of uh, what I found by traveling is that uh, sometimes you don't know exactly where you're going. I, I was <laughs> interested, actually, when I got out of school in uh, going to see Israel. I wanted to see what Israel was like. I'd been reading a lot about it. Hitched across North Africa, got to Israel, met a lot of South Hitched Africans. Hitched across? Uh, from Morocco to Egypt and then with up With a to, thumb. With a thumb, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, um, oh yeah, I remember uh, going into, um, I was right after the Algerian War and uh, sat oh, in a little wow. cafe in Algeria and they said, oh, vous êtes français, you know, you're French. Mm -hmm. I said, no, it's your sweet Canadian, you know. Oh, they all sat down. And uh, I said, what if I'd said I was French? They said, we would have cut your throat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you meet all kinds of people. But anyway, I, uh, mm. I met a lot of uh, people from Southern Africa in Israel. And I thought, well, I think I'll hitch down there and see what it's like. So ended up going through the Ethiopia and the Sudan and everything. And it was really quite an adventure. The Congo was blowing up. Rhodesia was declaring independence. There, so, was, so there was a lot going on so in when Africa. When were you born? What year? 39. 39, I missed mm. that. And in Canada, okay, anything significant other than your Canadian heritage that's worth well, talking uh, about? I'm an American citizen now. Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, hitchhiking, uh, hitchhiking, filmmaking, and now uh, traveling with my gorgeous wife. <laughs> yeah, is, uh, is your girlfriend gonna see this? This show. <laughs> yeah, he's my main man. <laughs> my main man. <laughs> Do you have a religious preference? No. Did you ever have one? Well, I guess my feeling is that uh, people who think they know everything are really irritating to those of us who do. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're bad. You're bad. Uh, how about formal education? You you made a few comments about that so far. Yeah, I got a BA in political science uh -huh. from the University of Alberta before I moved down to the states, and I got a, a master's at UCLA in filmmaking. Yeah, but yeah. that was done to like ten years later. Do you like education? Uh, it's nice to have it. The most important thing I learned about filmmaking in film school was that you didn't have to go to film school. All you need to use that money and sit out there and make your own movies, read a book on, on camera angles, etc. And uh, you, you don't have to go to film school to be a filmmaker. How about the education you've got just doing in your travels and you're moving around all over the place and different people you met? I bet you've got a lot of real education generally about life in general. I think so, but I got, I've got a lot of anecdotes, let's <laughs> say. But um, the uh, as far as um, traveling around the world, I think I, I would like to see everybody get a fair amount of traveling. You know, people tend to be kind of a little bit narrow-minded sometimes. I would, it'd be great, absolutely great, if all American students could spend like one year of high school in some other country, yeah. you know, just to see how other people live, how other people think, you know, it'd make people, I think, a lot more, a lot more tolerant of each other. So are you earning a living now, or do you have your, a wealth you're living off of? No, I'm retired. I don't have wealth I'm living <laughs> off of. I've got <laughs> a <laughs> median, you know, <laughs> Social Security, this kind of thing, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and Kay's got some too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we're doing okay, but we're certainly not rich. How about children? Do you have children or grandchildren? I have, uh, I, have one, uh, I have one son from a previous marriage, and he's enjoying himself now. He's been traveling in Ecuador and Honduras as a volunteer teacher, and now he's working at a university in Colombia. Um, in South America. You and he really he likes that to tendency that. from you? I think so. He must have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He likes to travel too. Is he going to see this show? I doubt it. We might. I don't know. Uh, we get it. We, we'll get it on disc. On maybe the and internet. Send it to go him, to yeah. Don Beham YouTube yeah. and sure. it'll be We've on the internet. That before, oh, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, that if it's like a, if it's on the internet, yeah. he'll see it. He's he's yeah. very internet savvy. Does he know that you like him? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh sure. You better yeah. tell him because I'm yeah. not sure he he's going to see this with that camera. He's my favorite too. <laughs> he's my <laughs> favorite <laughs> stepson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, will you comment about your political persuasion overall, left, right, center, or your Tea Party? Or uh, right? Pretty progressive, yeah. I don't think we should call it the Tea Party. <laughs> we should just call it the Koch Brothers Party and let it go. And Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I started him off. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's, not, that's, not, that's not a grassroots party. That's an astroturf party. You bet. And uh, mm -hmm. it just really bugs me to see corporations getting that kind of power.
What do you uh, mean by astroturf party? Say in other words, words, what that means? Uh, it means oh, it's good. it's it's yeah, uh, it's um, pretending to be gra uh, mm -hmm. to bending, depending to be a grassroots party, mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. uh, it's totally artificial. It's big money from the top. Sure, you betcha. Yeah. And memberships in political, social, or civic organizations worth mentioning? Uh, Friendship Force and a couple of other travel organizations. We like to travel. I'm not involved in any political organization. Mm -hmm. Aside from uh, Alliance for Democracy, I'm kind of uh, they're they're a pretty good group, and uh, I, I know I'm a we member are. Of that. Oh yeah, <laughs> so you're a member. A long time in fact, member. I think that's where I met you, Don. You know that uh, Alliance for Democracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that they they've I don't know if they're working on it now, but they were. I'd like to see a rank your choice ballot. So, you know, you mm -hmm. and I and anybody mm -hmm. else, we could vote for the party we wanted, mm -hmm. but we're not throwing our vote away then, you know. In other yes. words, as soon as soon as that smaller party gets eliminated, it goes down to our second choice, yes, third yes, choice. And, so on. and that way, uh, the party, the person who finally does get that 51% knows that there's support from these other smaller groups, and you should take that into consideration. And that's real democracy versus Yeah, that's real democracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. This idea of somebody getting 35 percent and becoming mm -hmm. president is ridiculous. Any persons from the past or alive today that you look up to or admire? Any names come to mind for you? Oh, uh, a lot of them, but uh, uh -huh. uh, politically, no. I, that's a hard one. I don't know. I have to pass mm -hmm. on that at the moment. Just what, whatever name comes to mind. Like for me, I've been doing this for so many years, I can tick them right off like that automatically. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Well, never mind you. Should we pass that up? No, yeah, that's that thorough, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> thorough. Yeah, yeah thorough. Oh, yeah. That says something about you. See, that's why I ask you these questions. I always like that one where uh, Thoreau was in jail for doing some abolitionist work. Mm -hmm. And uh, Emerson went and saw him and said, Henry, what are you doing in there? And he said, Ralph, what are you doing right there? Out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we move over to your better half? Mm, okay. <laughs> better three quarters, maybe. <laughs> and that's supposed to ask you when you were born because. You I'll were born. tell you, I'm 72 years old. I was born on September 15th, 1942. So wow. I'm proud of my age. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, and where was that? In Newburgh, Oregon. You are local. Yep. I yeah. how, you've been here uh, except when you started traveling all over the place with this guy. Well, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Lived in in the area all my life, and I love Oregon. You ready for your trick question? Sure. Why were you born? Why was I born? That was Everybody a, repeats that question back to well, me. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, I can say. <laughs> I can <laughs> probably I no uh, one of the few people that I think I was conceived on Pearl Harbor Day. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you it sounds good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you got a smart <laughs> addict like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, and uh, anything significant about your cultural heritage worth uh, well, commenting about? Well, my father was uh, First Nation um, and French. And uh, his family came down from Quebec and settled in uh, South Dakota. And he was actually, actually both of my parents, but my mother is not Indian at all, um, were born on the Indian Reservation, the Rosebud Indian Reservation in uh -huh. South Dakota. Interesting. Do you have any comments or thoughts about that fact about your... Well, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting because I, my grandmother on my mother's side, who was German, um, she came to live with us when I was really young. And I remember asking her, because people said my father was Indian, and I asked her, is dad Indian? And she said, you don't need to know. You're an American. Uh, so that was the end of the conversation. Okay. <laughs> they lost the, the heritage yeah. there because yeah. it wasn't fashionable to do it. And if yep. you were, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm uh, New Orleans, red, white, and oh, black. Oh, yeah. And uh, when I was a kid, you didn't talk about those parts, and uh -huh. hopefully in succeeding generations, uh, the children became uh, light-skinned enough they could become white. Yeah. But yeah. that's, I've, yeah. I've said this a thousand times before. Let's yeah. continue on. So, yeah. uh, and Would you like to know how I met John? Yes. Yeah. He picked me up on a bike ride. Mm -hmm. I was in front of him, and I was pedaling away, and he said he heard this noisy lady in front of him, and so he said he just had to meet me, and he did. And then he talked me into quitting a 
very lucrative job that I had been at for almost 30 years and uh, at the age of 61 and <laughs> marrying him, putting a pack on my back, drifting around Mexico for a month and a half. We just got on a bus and said, oh, let's go there. We looked at a map, oh, let's go there. We'll go to Oaxaca, okay. Well, let, let's go to Chiapas area. <laughs> And Talk that's about what we did. adventurous. Yeah, yeah. I've never looked back. And what year was this about? Um, two. Mm. Yeah, about 2002 or 2003. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I haven't looked back since, and it's been just an adventure from the day I met him. Yeah, I can see how you two talk to each other and look at each other when you talk. Yeah. That's marvelous. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I even like it most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just travel. How much of the year do you guys spend traveling anymore? Uh, roughly. Well, we just came back from um, Mexico. Mm, that wasn't a typical one. We were yeah, in a kind that of was a, interesting. Some, somebody invited <laughs> us down for two weeks in a timeshare in Puerto Vallarta, and it's a, it's kind of rich and big, and we didn't like it at all, actually. Well, not I mean, that we, we didn't like it. It was, it was yeah. it's like being in a rest Something home. You know, the idea yeah. is uh, lie around a pool, you know, which is which is fine for an hour, you know, but... Uh, you like to hang out with the ordinary folk, huh? Well, yeah, we got we got out of the compound. Yeah, we did the no-no thing where we went out and wandered around in the streets and... Mm -hmm. <laughs> you didn't run into any narco gorillas, did you? No, mm. I didn't find any gorillas. No, sir, we no. found those in Tanzania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, political persuasion. Are you an old lefty like... Uh, I'm, you know, I'm a nothing. That's not true. You're it's not everything true. It's not true. I just don't talk about it <laughs> <laughs> like you guys do. You, okay, yeah. you guys are vocal enough for it, for people like me. Yeah. Yeah. Any mm -hmm. comments about children or grandchildren? Um, I have um, two granddaughters, um, and they're in their thirties. And I have one great granddaughter who is seven, and she's one of the light of my life. And mm. I have a daughter that has MS, and she lives in Bend, and I have a son that's a gold miner. Yeah, and he's... Mm. Go ahead. No, he's doing he's doing um, uh, gold panning down in. Uh, I mean, he he's kind of uh, retired. He's head of the American Mining Rights Association, yeah. and they're fighting the Forest Service down there. He's very much an activist, and uh, he's uh, you know he's retired from um, a job he had up here in security, and is now doing a lot of gold mining down there and organizing other gold miners in down in there. The and where is California, that? California, Sierra, yeah, yeah. The Sierra yeah. Nevada, the old, um, in the old uh, gold mining areas. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And if he comes up here, I'll bring him in and have him talk to you. you he's fascinating to listen to. Well, please do Yeah, that. he gives quite a few talks on the radios down there. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's got his own kind of TV show that they uh, yeah. they do on YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. They so memberships and political social oh, civic yeah, I can tell you. Memberships. Mediation. We we do. I I've been a mediator for 20 years. Ever since I went to George Fox University for my masters, and that's more than 20 years ago. But um, I really sincerely believe in mediation. And John and I are both coaches at our local school for the children to do mediation. And you, you, mm. you read it that. You well, tell them what happened. Well, no, she's been doing mediation uh, for uh, for a small claims court for yeah, uh, for many and, years. And, and victim uh, offender mediation. And this is uh, all Yamhill County stuff. And uh, yeah. neighbor to neighbor and things like that. Yeah, in Yamhill County. We're mm. very much into mediation in Yamhill County. That must be pretty interesting to do, huh? It is. It's, it's fascinating, yeah. And it's um, it can be rewarding and it can be pretty heavy, too, sometimes. Yeah. yeah, especially the victim offender ones. That that's a little difficult sometimes. As we speak now, do you think of any particular case that was unusually interesting that would be worth uh, mentioning without mentioning names? Um, it's really hard to to mm -hmm. to to mention them and then not <laughs> okay we'll give pass. any information we'll on it. But uh, yeah, some of them, some of the elder mediations that I do, uh, yeah, and it's small claims court. When I do small claims mediations for people that are obviously, uh, you know, on their last, it's their last hope to be able to survive, it seems like, mm. and. 
a lot of the times it's people who are broke and and they yeah. got medical expenses yeah you know? and that really hurts you know? I would think that probably at least 50 percent of the ones that come through small claims court are medical expenses what if we had uh, single payer uh, universal health care all over the country yeah. rather than having insurance companies would yeah. that be well, useful? Well, there's 20, or, there's 20 mm. or 30 really advanced countries in the world and every one of them's got a better health care system than we have. What's wrong with this picture? Never mind. Mm. <laughs> we'll set you off on a political <laughs> bent. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I will, anyhow. Yeah. So, uh, persons from the past, or anyone alive today that you particularly uh, admire or admired or look up to? Probably my grandmother. She came to this country when she was 16. Um, her parents came to this country when she was actually 14 and left her and her brother, who was 12, um, in mm -hmm. Romania. And they told her she had to earn her own set expenses to get to the United States. At that age? At that age. Can you imagine that? And okay. she did, and she went down and had the money, and they told her that she couldn't come because she didn't have a male escort. So she had to go back and help her brother earn enough money to be her male escort, and he was 14 at the time, and she was 16. That was her male escort, a 14-year-old brother. Romania. Yeah. Wow, there's, there's a story in the half, huh? Yeah, there's a lot of stories from Grandma. Yeah, she was something else. So why do you admire her or look up to her? She's a very strong lady, yeah. Are you a strong lady? I think so. I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went to work at a mill in, in Newburgh, a paper mill, and uh, I was the first woman in management, and I remained there until I left. And I worked there almost 30 years. And I went... When I went to work there, I had a GED, and when I left there, I had an MBA. Oh, you're something else. I see why I fell in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guys at the mill helped me, too. Uh -huh. You know, the union was fantastic. Yeah. The union? What's that anymore? Are there any real yeah. unions or <laughs> Yeah, there, there was then, yeah. I'm curious about your name. That's an interesting name, C-A-Y-E-K. <laughs> That's actually... There's a joke behind that. I, I, when I was a child, I went to Catholic school. And Been there, done that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, you know they don't let you use nicknames. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know how to spell K, but my name was Catherine with a C. Uh -huh. But at home I was called K. Uh -huh. So I just naturally assumed K was with a C. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is that on your passport? No, it's Catherine. It's with, yeah, yeah. yeah. On That's my a passport, story yeah. for me too. Uh, yeah. Catholic and uh, uh -huh. Donald, uh, mm -hmm. middle name Christian Beham. Uh -huh. uh, but the priest said uh, on the birth certificate they put Christian as the the and that's. Mm -hmm in my records. Mm -hmm. So all my life I was going through with Donald Christian Bayham and then when I was working in the military, I mean in, in aerospace, mm -hmm. I had to get a secret clearance. So they're checking way back and they says, you've been using the wrong name all your life. You're Christian Donald <laughs> Bayham. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those Catholics. Yeah, those yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. That's yeah, my story. It just makes us both unique. Yes. So let us uh, move on, get ready for the second half of the show and take a break for a few minutes. And then we'll go into where you've been and what it means for Friendship Force. Okay, great. 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 Mr. Director, a little break. <laughs>
we're back. Thanks for staying tuned. Mm -hmm. And for your first time viewers who missed the opening of the show, are you a channel surfing? Uh, the show you're watching is Conversations with Dr. Don. It's an ongoing series of one-hour standalone talk, sh talk shows where I interview interesting people like my guests here tonight. And we're going to talk now about uh, friendship, force, and related subjects. So let's start right into it. I got a few cheat questions. I persuaded John to send me, and I'll go <laughs> to those to start the conversation, if I may. And you will talk particularly about uh, Tanzania. 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 Right. Uh -huh. Thank That's you. That's tough. Yeah. Establishing a sewing business for some women at an orphanage in Tanzania. Yeah. Did I hear it? Yeah, Tanzania. Tanzania. Yeah, it's yeah, hard. Tanzania. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what sort of business uh, was it, this uh, sewing business? Well, actually, I brought a oh, wow. one of one of our beautiful mm. bags. That we there was had. an orphanage there that uh, we read about, and uh, they had a uh, um, sewing project going on there, but they didn't have much in the way of equipment or anything. And um, we contacted them, got in touch with them, because uh, the lady uh, who founded the orphanage actually uh, is from the Portland area, and uh, we read about it in the paper. And the long and the short of it was that we took over some sewing machines. Kay got a business uh, going there, and so there's a number of women there now who are sewing and who are um, uh, doing bags like this for, uh, for tourism. And the pro the, they are making up oh. uh, a wage mm -hmm. for the first time in their life. There's uh -huh. a, some, some uh, sewers and a couple of beaters. And um, we kind of looked around for markets to help them uh, in Zanzibar and places. And they, uh, um, th it's still going. You know, we took over sewing machines in suitcases. You know, we, she could take two suitcases. I could take two suitcases. We put a sewing machine in each suitcase. And then the people in charge of the orphanage were coming over. They took two sewing machines. And a volunteer, another volunteer was coming over. She took two sewing machines. So we got eight sewing machines there. And look what that makes. Yeah. yeah. Yoursisters.org. Yeah, that's Did you see the, that? The lady and the gentleman, uh, Frank and Libby, both live in Portland. And that's how I found them through the Oregonian. Uh -huh. uh, they had done an article about her. Mm -hmm. So um, I contacted her, and everything clicked. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Why did you decide to do something like that? That took some special effort or some special interest. It wasn't the first time. We we did it before. Yeah. Uh, we we uh, the first sewing project that we did was over in Madagascar. Uh, Kay had uh, read about. Uh, actually, it was on the web. A Canadian lady had a a school she had formed in Madagascar, and they w they needed some sewing help and all that. So we decided a couple of years ago we would go over to Madagascar and uh, we brought some uh, sewing machines with us. Uh, no, I'm sorry, no, we I, didn't. No, I was, we were in Madagascar and what I did was is I bought wheel type sewing machines. and Non-power because non there was no electricity. Yeah, there was yeah. no electricity where we were at and so that's going back to my grandmother. My grandmother taught me how to my sew. My mother had an old, an old singer with yeah, the pedal. Yeah, yeah, the old pedal. But yeah, <laughs> you remember that well. Well, these were smaller ones and there were wheel and uh, they were called Mercedes, but they weren't quality machines. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time, uh, my millwrights, would, the mill would have been proud that I took them apart, put them back together again, I don't know you how many times. You actually did that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I took them apart many mm. times. And so we decided if I did this again, which we ended up doing in Tanzania, that it would be electric sewing machines. I wanted to go where they had electricity. I'm too, that was too much work. Of course, yeah. yeah. Wow. But in um, Madagascar, they were able to uh, sew a lot of material, um, like, uh, for instance, their uh, uniforms that they had at the school. The ki they were able to sew those with the machines. So. But it was a lot of work. A lot of work. And it's ongoing today? Yeah. In Madagascar, um, it, it, I don't totally know what's happening there now because um, the school years is a little bit different than it is here. But in Tanzania, there's no question it's going, and it's up and running. And, and it's and doing, a business. Yeah, it's a great business. It's mm. doing really well. And they're making a profit. And yeah, you can. Where did we f see these? Whole Foods? Uh, the the yeah. international market on, uh, on yeah. Barber. Barber yeah. Boulevard, yeah, uh, they yeah. were selling these. Barber Boulevard here in Portland. Yeah, yeah. here mm -hmm. in Portland, yeah, yeah. they were yeah. selling those. Yeah. 
But at any rate, the uh, yeah, the sewing seems to be going over very well there, from what mm -hmm. we can gather. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking around. Possibly, we're going to do it in another place too. We're not sure exactly where yet. Uh, where you, it takes a lot of research finding a place mm -hmm. that's all set to, you know, who can, that'll handle and is interested in doing this sort of thing. So why provide those people with a, a business in sewing? What's the reason for it? The Keep rewards, Don, are unbelievable. I remember in Tanzania sitting down with the ladies and one lady told me that she never leaves the village. She just um, stays in the village. She has four children and she's 25 years old. And um, she said she walks a mile and a half to sew. And it's a great reward for her because she, she gets out of her village. Uh, her mother-in-law takes care of her children for her. She gets away, she gets with other women and to her, that's just unbelievably wonderful for her. And so it's not so much the sewing <laughs> and, uh -huh. and making the money as... The associations and yeah. being together. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And so that was really rewarding to me. And um, then we have, these are, um, hopefully there'll be something, be, these are gonna be produce bags and... Um, and you've got some slides that we're gonna be showing later on and yeah. you've got some some uh, websites and email addresses when it's appropriate. We'll mm -hmm. bring those up so people Great. can see. Yeah, and, and this is some beading that's done on it. The, the good thing is, is that now it's not just eight women sewing, but then it's a couple of other women um, that are involved in the whole project there at mm. the school, and, mm. and it's mm. really, really rewarding. Well, these net bags are supposed to re replace plastic bags in the supermarket, so as plastic bags get phased out, these net bags will, should do better. Yeah. Know. Well, you're working from all angles, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. You have to, uh, yeah. This is, this is wedding dress material in Tanzania. Yeah. 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 We just when, went to, got droppings from the wedding, from the uh, fabric stores that sell wedding dresses. When I got there, I asked her um, about making these bags, and, you know, we kicked it around. And we couldn't really come up with um, a cheap way to buy the material until I said, hey, don't you have people that have weddings here? And they said, yeah. And so we went to the a wedding store and they gave us all what John and I both called the drop, you know, that they can't sure, use. Yeah. And there was lots of material and they sell it like it was for a couple of dollars a bag. Mm -hmm. And so it's <laughs> <laughs> ingenuity, ingenuity. And then um, we were trying to develop markets and um, in Tanzania, what is it, 70% uh, of them a, a, a lot of the a lot of the income in Tanzania is from tourism, and so we were developing stuff that could go that would the be, tourists would buy. The tourists would buy, yeah. 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 And so that's why you you see these um, in almost every tourist shop. Uh, and now with Zanzibar also. <laughs> so in that adventure, uh, some of the human beings that mm -hmm. you met with and hung out with and worked together with. Do you have any thoughts about any, any of those uh, that are unique or interesting? Oh, Everest, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is Maasai country where we are. The Maasai yeah. are traditional pastoral uh, nomadic people. Yeah, tall, and they, uh, they have cattle herds. But they're really being hit by global warming, uh -huh. you know, and uh, there's a, a drought there and there. A lot of the herds are dying or, or shrinking. That's and uh, the, uh, one guy we met, he's a Maasai, but he had gone to university in Dar es Salaam and he had a degree. He has a degree in environmental science and he wrote a big, a big theoretical paper. I'm going to put up a website about him now so that, uh, you know, other people could talk to him. But this is a guy from the inside being telling what global warming has had an effect, how, how it has had an effect and the kind of effects it's had on this very large society. There's six to 800,000 Maasai in central Tanzania and Kenya and they migrate back and forth and all that. And uh, another thing is b with the shortage of uh, water, a lot of the guys have had to go and work in cities and then they come back and they, they contract AIDS, come back and uh, oh. and spread, and they all have multiple wives and so the wives get AIDS. Oh, and it's just really, a, it's really a sad situation over there. And this, this one Maasai guy has really seen it from the inside and yeah. has got the scientific background to write about it. Uh, are things turning the other way as far as AIDS is concerned in that area of the world? Is it diminishing uh, no. frequency? I don't think, I, I don't think so, but I don't know. It's different in every country. Every country, yeah. yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Don't know, but I know it's really hitting the Maasai hard. Mm -hmm. What languages did you speak when you were there? English. English. In <laughs> <laughs> Madagascar, um, we spoke some, some French. French. Some yeah. French Madagascar. It's a former French Malagasy colony. Malagasy. But, um, yeah. but uh, Tanzania, yeah, I mean, w no, we didn't learn Swahili. I mean, we, no, weren't, we weren't there long enough. And mm -hmm. a bit, you can get by in English, okay. It's kind of the, the standard. There's a lot of languages in all of those African countries, but English is kind of, uh, you know, the overall language. We spent six months in India some time ago, and, and John learned that, that uh, he tried to learn Tamil. Oh, boy. And he finally gave up. Something so like, four, said, okay, something we like 450 letters. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get them like that. Yeah, right. That's right, yeah. The learn Tamil in two weeks is a study of a book I picked up. And I, thought, I opened it up and I said, I won't even learn the alphabet in two weeks. Yeah. Listen, we've got those slides that we're going to show. And we've okay. got that one panel that shows all these organizations how you can get in touch with them. Let me know when we should put that up so well, the you viewers can, put can the, see it. You can put the slides up now. Sure, we can take a look and, at yeah. that. And then and we just when you want us to change to the next one, well, give us mm -hmm. a high sign yeah. and we'll do that. Uh, yeah, the, uh, we start, start starting up in uh, the, fir the first bit. The bit of this slideshow is just a, a kind of a, for, a prologue, Madagascar, showing how uh, how we did it in Madagascar. Nice. Madagascar is the island off to the lower right there. You know, it's a pretty big island. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow. but uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a pretty backward country. I mean, uh, you know, these are this is the village that was near us, uh, made out of uh, red. Did brick. you take those? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, these oh, are all yeah, all these are and there's a oh, lot of a lot of young kids <laughs> there. A yeah, lot Tim of Horton young kids. Church, Canada. <laughs> and that's that's a big school mm, that we Canadian. were teaching at. And there's uh, a sewing machine. <laughs> there's a sewing machine. Yeah, and the, yeah. Here, these are the uh, the students and the mothers oh. of students who are learning to sew. So this was a, this is the first sewing project that we did. But how they look, they don't look like Maasai or Pygmies. Oh, no, or no, 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 this, no, this is in, Madagascar. This these was people, in Madagascar. These are, they, they're not African. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean some of them are African, but they're mostly Malaysia, Polynesian mm -hmm. background. But they're, they're yeah. Malagasy, is what it am asking. Uh -huh. They're their own group of people. Yeah. Are they friendly and happy? And oh, they were wonderful. wonderful people. Well, we had, we had a, I had a joyful time oh, there. Oh, how yeah. beautiful. Just a lot, and yeah. they're just learning how to sew yeah. and showing I wanted the to clothes. take them all home with me. <laughs> and they just become buddies. You know? yeah. I mean, you become good friends with the, these people. The population in Madagascar it doubles, doubles every, every 30 years. Okay, that, so that was just kind of the prologue to Madagascar. Now, now we, here we come to Tanzania. Anyway, um, when we were in, um, okay, there's your Tanzanian. So oh, we're coming to Tanzania. Okay. Now I see. I, <laughs> I can't see. I have too to well. tell him yeah. what he's seeing. <laughs> Madagascar. Yeah. Oh, we're back in Madagascar again. No, it's yes, starting over again. Starting over again. Okay. How do we move ahead? Yeah. To the second okay. half. Okay. Sorry, it's start over. <laughs> Oh, okay, so uh, we're looking at Madagascar once more. You can mm -hmm. see the, the mud brick. The, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and, and children. You see children carrying children because, the, like I said, the population turns over every 30 years. It doubles, and it's not sustainable. That's incredible. Well, it is incredible because they've deforested the land because they live off of rice. Mm -hmm. And to cook the rice, you have to have wood or something to, to boil the rice with. Yeah. And so... It, it, again, it's just not sustainable. I don't know what will happen to the country. Mm -hmm. oh. The people were keen on learning, and the uh, yeah, and, and they were extremely friendly. A lot of them had never see, been able you see to sew before. Brothers with brothers and sisters with sisters carrying their, uh, and they loved to come and just watch us. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, that's our class. That's the class of uh, yeah. She was a really sharp lady. Um, and <laughs> They're waiting now. Some of the young girls now are waiting to not marry okay. until later. Oh, okay. Now your this is your sister's orphanage. orphanage. Okay, good. This is yeah. This is uh, Tanzania. Oh, and oh we're going back again. We're going back exactly. Maybe we better move up, move on because you're going back and starting the same series, series over, over again. Series over again. Yeah. 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 That's okay then. There oh, here sister. we go. There's your sister's <laughs> orphanage. There oh, okay. Go. Great. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is uh, this is outside of Arusha in northern Tanzania. It's quite a ways inland, 
And uh, what do we got here? Baby? The orphanage Tanzania. here. This is a the this is the way they wash their clothes, and this is the cooking facilities that they had at the yeah. orphanage. Um, this is Africa as compared to Madagascar. Yes, this, yeah, is, this Africa. is Africa. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, and these are some of the orphans at the school. There were seven of them, and. Uh, and there you are. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, they're uh, writing thank yous for some of the stuff that we brought over uh, uh, to some of the people. Yeah, they are always fooling with my hair. They figured that wasn't quite right. Okay. <laughs> and tell them this the is sewing the sewing project. project. Yeah, there, there you go. You'll see that bag that I showed you and some of the other bags. Those are the sewing machines that I took over. Those are genomes. And um, I had a wonderful lady that donated the money to purchase all those. Who, who makes those machines? What country? Uh, you d I think they come out of the United States, but that's a good question. I really don't know. Uh -huh. yeah. um, I've never seen any quite like that before. Yeah. They're really lightweight. They weigh 14 pounds. So no. that's why you can put them in that's a suitcase. That's why we can carry yeah. them in our suitcase. And yeah. they work fine, huh? Oh, yeah, they work yeah. great. Uh -huh. And the good thing is, is if you have all the same sewing machines, it's like when you were younger and have a car, you can borrow from Harry's car if his breaks down, and you know you just take the spare parts. Uh huh. Okay. Um, oh, this this part here. Colors. If you could just stop it for a minute here. Can we pause it? Yeah. Uh, no, sorry, can't pause it. Okay, okay, that's okay. This is the cutting tools, and I found that um, see, the there's a kind of a little wheel thing and a mat. And I reduced the cutting time of the material from one lady doing cutting for her own project for the week down to one lady a half a day for everybody. So it worked great. Okay. Wow, well, where are we now? Um, that's the bags. Yeah. Oh, okay, marketing, good. including Zanzibar. Okay. Yeah, this is marketing now. We just. Uh, we went, um, this is the Maasai market. We heard that there was a big fire there uh, in Arusha and it destroyed this Just market recently. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Ah. We talked to a lady who was there. But um, That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. have a lot of great, yeah. They are so creative. We went down there and see that boat in the background. They were... Uh, They're caulking caulk the boat with uh, plastic bags. Yeah. yeah, they'll take little plastic bags and stuff them into the holes Man. in the boat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was really so clever. So use for plastic. Yeah. Oh, uh, hard to believe. Yeah, yeah. How was your eating yeah. over there in those countries? Is this, uh, this oh. is spice now, right? This no, is, uh, it's, oh. no, it's... Oh, okay. Uh, this is the... Uh, yeah. This is a spice one there. Oh, yeah. This is where we went to Zanzibar, and, and that was a different spices, and I don't, can't tell you what those are. Ginger and uh, I don't know. cinnamon and nutmeg. It looks like a bug. Kind of yeah, it does look like a bug, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's a oh, handsome man in the middle of the oh. Zanzibar. Uh, th this is the, uh, what, it's rich, called Stone rich Town. Shots. Stone Town. These, uh, all these things are, uh, all the, the streets. You and see the lady the holding stones. up, there was a lady holding up her hand where she didn't want the picture taken. Mm. And you did it anyhow. Yeah. yeah. And it, okay, yeah. Well, we we did, but it they want money for it because they ah. because of um, what is it? Like National Geographic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, Life they, in they, Tanzania. They, oh yeah. The, this is just give you an idea of some street shots and everything in uh, Tanzania, uh, in Arusha, and in the villages nearby. Mm. Uh, did you buy anything at these markets? Oh yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, we shopped oh, yeah. at all of the markets. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, right. just you know, food and things like that. How colorful! Yeah, yeah. And, didn't uh, but they didn't want their pictures taken. A lot of them without being paid because they had sure. heard National Geographic had been taking pictures and paying for them. This mm -hmm. gentleman so. here is Everest. That's Everest. That's <laughs> yeah. the uh, Tanzanian. He looks like Everest too. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's Tanzanian. He's the uh, Maasai, Maasai. Uh, uh, scholar. Uh huh. Yeah. And there's a Maasai. They don't know I'm taking pictures because I have the camera down at my waist. And so they're kind of watching me, but <laughs> I'm taking pictures anyway. <laughs> Isn't that a cutie? <laughs> yeah. And this is a Maasai market uh, where they're selling cattle. Mm -hmm. And thinking, again, uh, all the pictures are taken down from my waist. Uh -huh. And there, you see the cell phone in his hand, and he's in traditional clothing. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're way ahead of us in cell phones in many ways. I could go really? into details on that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. This is Tanzanian wildlife. Oh, okay. Yeah. These are, uh, wildlife. I think it shows we, women. We went, for <laughs> <laughs> we went for a couple of days. That's in the edge of Ngorongoro crater. Oh, there's an animal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and right. yeah there were zebras oh. and lions and uh, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Uh, we just went out for a couple of days with uh, somebody we knew in a uh, Land Rover type vehicle or a uh -huh. Toyota Land Cruiser, I guess it was. And um, tell me when the baboons come up there. Okay. Um, 
Elephants. elephants. Oh, there's the elephants. Yeah, it's got, all the ele all the animals there's just ignore you. See this ba this baboon uh, <laughs> he jumped so in the window of a car, you know, and uh, took a bunch of stuff and jumped out again just because <laughs> the owner wasn't there. You got to learn. You got to keep your windows up. Uh, and then there what was, was the temperature uh, when you were taking just, these? It was just nice, just it's nice. Seventies nice, and eighties. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. Look at them right next to the vehicle. The lions. Oh, they're yeah, not yeah. afraid at all. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, there's lions there. Boom! All these cars appear from everywhere. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, we didn't see any until all of a sudden the lion showed up. Mm -hmm. The end. Yeah, that's it. There yeah, you go. That's it. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of touristy Tanzania, I suppose. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, the, ma the major thing there was the uh, the business that's been set up and the women that, that Kate taught, you know, are are now, uh, well, they knew how to sew already. They knew how to sew. But I, she they sew kinda, better than I did. Yeah, but she got the business <laughs> up, up and going Helped and hopefully, them. you know, the profits go to the orphanage. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at continuing this effort in other places? Yes, uh -huh. it's, yeah, a, it's a model that I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What yeah. about these places that you get in touch with them? We had a slide here of those addresses. When do you want oh, to put that, that up on yeah, the screen? Yeah, that's that, another uh, subject, and so I'll let you you tell them about traveling. Okay, yeah, we, we, belong, to, we belong to an organization also called Friendship Force, which is trying to promote friendship around the, con uh, around the world. And uh, it was started during the Carter administration. We've got about seven you know. minutes left. Okay, and so uh, uh, what happens is, like, say, uh, the Salem Club, for instance, we'll go and make a, a di we'll go and visit the Tokyo Club and then the Taiwan Club and then the Thailand Club for a week each. You know, staying at homes of people there. Uh -huh. And uh, other people will come over to our club. You know, and uh, like we uh, usually, you'll go and visit. You'll go and do one outbound trip a year and one inbound trip internationally. So, like we had a group from Australia come in recently, mm -hmm. and uh, then there's a one domestic trip out. You know, like uh, we had a Louisiana trip come in, and we went to the prairies recently, going out. And so you you travel back and forth. The clubs exchange, and you visitors, stay in each other's homes, and you stay in each other's homes, right? And, and uh, they entertain you. They take you to all the museums and to the parks and all kinds yeah. of wherever you're going you learn a lot more because you're with people yeah. who actually live there and uh, mm -hmm. all those websites that were up there's the international there's friendship force international that's a world headquarters and they really tell you everything about it it's really uh, it's really well worth going to and we belong to the Salem Club uh, the which Albany. is well, it's called the mm -hmm. Mid Willamette Valley. Uh, so, shall we put that list up now? Sure, and yeah, you can sure. put that list up. Times. And then there's yeah. there's one in Portland. Yeah, it's uh, Portland, Vancouver. It's called mm -hmm. the uh, the Columbia mm -hmm. Friendship Force, and uh, they're all on the website, so they should take a look. You know, and then there's a couple of other travel clubs, the Affordable Travel Club. Which is uh, just that's just kind of a private little club. And they have on your website. Y yeah, and you that's stay you stay with friends. Uh, you know, if people join, there's about 2,500 people in it. We were coming back from Madagascar. We found there was an affordable travel club member in um, Amsterdam where the chain where the plane stopped, and mm -hmm. so we stayed there for a couple of days. You know, and when we were coming back from. Uh, Paris. For, for, from, from Madagascar, yeah, yeah we stayed in, in Paris, Paris with a travel, uh, affordable travel club member. So in, in Paris, Paris. <laughs> in Paris, and we were on San San Michel Boulevard. It cost us about thirty dollars a night, and they gave us breakfast. Yeah, and we were right how in could the you go wrong on right that? Right in the middle of Paris. Right you know. in the middle of Paris, and they told us places to go and things to see, and the time they had the bus schedules and all of that. I so, mean, yeah, I just want to recommend people if they're going to go traveling, it's uh, either check out Friendship Force and you go, kind of go with your club member, or you, Affordable Travel, or another similar one called Evergreen travel which is work, works the same as affordable travel there's a lot of these travel clubs around and they're really nice because you stay with you you stay with people who want to have travelers my wife pat and i are talking about going back to europe in a little different fashion mm -hmm. than the the, the mass of, on the mm -hmm. bus or like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and maybe we'll talk to you and see if you have some ideas yeah. for us. this is really a way to do Fr it now. friendship force is the one that we really um have got a lot out of and we've really enjoyed mm -hmm because they really go out of their way to make you comfortable. They plan a year ahead to mm -hmm. um, And not only that, exchanges. but let's say the, uh, the Tokyo Club says, okay, we can take 24 people, and only 16 people from your club show up. Okay, uh, uh, sign up. 
uh, then they put it out on the website and they say, hey, there's, uh, you know, Sa the Salem Club is heading to uh, uh, Tokyo okay. and they've got room for eight more people, you know, and you just, you just look at that website and you'll see four or five trips a week going to different places. Oh and gosh. if you're a Fr Friendship Force Club member, you can say, uh, yeah, the Milwaukee Club is uh, going off to Russia. I'd like to go on that, you and know. And if they've got room, boom, you can go with And it. it's busy year-round. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. all year-round. We round. went down, we went to California. We drove down there and I saw my son for a little while and then um, it was a group from... Yeah, we signed up with a group from Paris, uh, from France, I should say, that was coming over to see California. And they had a couple extra spots, so uh, we just signed up with them. Jumped on. So. Yeah. But and we stayed in people. Life you lead. It really yeah, works. It, it, it really, really, works really, really, really works great. And, you, and you, no hotel bills, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. How about eating and digestion and those kinds of things in the different countries you were in recently? Do you eat all the local food? Well, that that's a little different. Um, like Friendship Force, that you get all your meals given to you. Scary but mm. <laughs> But when John and I travel I have something called a steri pin that I buy from well, that I bought from REI and I swear by this it's ultraviolet light that sterilizes the water it's just a big jug and you just stir it up for about a minute and yeah. the water sterilizes. We never got sick. Really? We never get sick. Yeah, yeah we, it's really, it's yeah. really, it's better than pills. Yeah. A lot of times it's the water rather than yeah. the, on exactly. the food. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I, I'm pretty careful if we do have some kind of indigestion, I, I take uh, Lopramide. I don't, I don't believe in taking antibiotics until it's so bad, then you know, then you need to take them. And I've never, we've never got that far. And we've traveled all over the world, and we lived in mm. India for six months even. And, and you yeah. eat all the local foods, no matter yeah. where yeah. you are. Well, oh, yeah. pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty I mean, much. Yeah. I, usually, it's, we always have a place um, mm. somewhere where I can cook or heat the food. <laughs> And, and cook the food. Yeah, you got to be sensible, but you yeah. don't have to be afraid, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'm learning so much mm. t talking to you guys about this. Well, we have, um, when we give travel talks, and we do to give travel talks uh, for people, um, I have one section that's just tips, and I got a, lots of tips. <laughs> uh, we, we did that for... How come um, you don't get fat, all this eating and traveling you're doing? Well, because <laughs> we... I'm a race walker, and I go out you know, two to three hours every other day. And even now? Even now, race There's walking. Else. Yeah. So. Yeah, I try to run in some way, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I, just, I try but to keep up with him. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, yeah, uh, uh, that's one of the most interesting things. Uh, meeting people and eating, eating the uh, foreign foods, that, that's really enjoyable. I mean, it really teaches you a lot. Yeah. We do belong to something else that's unique to... to when oh, our, warm uh, showers? Warm oh, yeah, we, we're on yeah. one website where it's called Warm Showers, and any cyclist coming through the area, they can look up and see a place uh, on the web uh, where they will be able to stay. And in our cases, we're halfway between Portland and the coast, uh, and uh, so we have people staying there. We had a guy coming the other day who's traveling around the world on a cycle uh, and boating. He's, it's all muscle power. He's going all the way around the world. It's called the Expedition 720 Degrees. And, dot com. and, and he, uh, he hopes to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. In yeah. yeah, he's going to be, uh, he's hopefully, he's hoping to do it in two years. He's got to go around the world on strictly muscle power. In other words, no sails. He's got to paddle. He's going to paddle from Alaska to Russia and from Dakar, Senegal, across to Rio. And he's going to have like a, <laughs> a, a desalination little desalination thing with uh, solar power and it's going to be a big boat and uh, somebody's already done one person's done this already five years this guy's going to try to do it in four really interesting and we would never have met him except that he stayed at our place because we were uh, signed up as for warm showers he stayed at your place yeah mm -hmm. just for a day you know, is he really weird looking? Or <laughs> no, he's really <laughs> interesting he guy. Did, well, he he uh, he stayed there for two days, and he didn't stop eating from the day from the time he came through the door. <laughs> but, <laughs> but a neat guy. We but really yeah, get him. get a pencil and write this down. It's called Expedition Seven Twenty Degrees. Yeah. And that's seven two zero, and then the word degrees. We'll write that down later uh, on because and time is yeah. running out, and we're going to mm -hmm. need to have some closing thoughts or comments from you okay. about what happened tonight or anything else that the viewers would be interested in hearing from you. So look at that camera, which one, and tell the viewers what you think they should hear right now from you. Well, I, I would just advocate getting out, 
traveling around the world and yeah. don't be afraid everybody's always telling you that uh, hey it's really dangerous it's kind of scary aren't you worried you know you got to be sensible but on the other hand you don't have to be afraid people are pretty nice enough for you okay <laughs> oh yeah um i think it sums it all up when to say that i met john and my life changed totally uh, from the day I met him and the day I put mm -hmm. that pack on my back and drifted around Mexico. Uh, yeah, it's been nothing but reward. It's been a delight having you two on. It's been a real mm -hmm. pleasure and learning mm -hmm. stuff and appreciating how and who you are personally. It's been really fun. So see mm -hmm. you next time. Yeah, great to talk to you yeah. again, Don. Yeah, 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 thanks again. <laughs> <laughs> so, some PSAs, Mr. E, public service announcement. To get my show, the local broadcast schedule, go to my website, www.donbm.com, and click on Present Day Activities, local broadcast schedule. To watch my shows on the web, go to Don Bayam YouTube and click on a particular show. There's hundreds on there, all sorts of interviews. Mm -hmm. And the ACLU, we've got to save the American Civil Liberties Union yes. because our civil liberties are slowly going down the tubes. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter whether it's Republican or Democratic administrations in Washington, civil liberties are in jeopardy. Join the ACLU, I promise. To get my shows broadcast by other stations around the country, ask your local public access station to go to pegmedia.org, pegmedia.org, and follow instructions so that they can broadcast my shows from other parts of the country. And now uh, we got to end corporate personhood. we got to take back our country and say that corporations are not persons and money is not speech. Thanks mm -hmm. for watching. Remember KFC. I've told you before, I'll tell you again, and not Kentucky Fried Chicken, <laughs> Dr. Don's KFC. <laughs> kind, friendly, friendly and, and charitable. charitable. <laughs> I like that. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time.